this video is going to be lesson two of pre-calculus and lesson two is rationalizing. So rationalizing was first introduced in Math 20-1 and what rationalizing is, it's the process of removing a radical. So in 20-1 we had radicals in the denominator that we wanted to remove. So let's look at this first example, um, the square root of one half. Now the square root of one half is simply the square root of one over the square root of two. The square root of one I know is one over root two. And then in 20-1, they didn't want us to submit our answers with the radical in the denominator, so what we did was we rationalized. So in order to get rid of that radical um, in the denominator, I'm gonna multiply both numerator and denominator by root two. And what that would give me is that would give me root two over root two times root two is four. No, nope, root two times root two, sorry, is two. Because remember, uh, root two times root two, that's the square root of four, the square root of four is two. So my rationalized answer would be this. Now, I just want you to realize that this answer here and that guy, they are equivalent to one another. These two would have the exact same decimal. And what I did was I actually did punch it into my calculator. So one over root two gives you that decimal, root two over two gives you this. So these are equivalent forms, it's just this one is rationalized. All right, let's do that same process to this. So square root of three over seven is the same thing as the square root of three over the square root of seven. I wanna rationalize the denominator, so I'm gonna multiply numerator and denominator by root seven. Root seven times root seven is seven, because it gives me root 49, but the square root of 49 is seven. And my numerator would give me um, the square root of three times seven, which is 21. Okay, then what we had in Math 20-1 is we had denominators with radicals, but the denominator was also a binomial. So if we wanna get rid of this radical in a denominator, but we have a binomial, what we need to do is we rationalize by multiplying by the conjugate. So I'm going to put um, this in a bracket, this binomial bracket, and the conjugate of root x minus two is root x plus two, that's the conjugate. And then what I do to the bottom, I'm gonna um, do the same thing to the top, so root x plus two. Okay, my numerator. I've got 2x and then I have square root of x plus 2. And remember there was a shortcut that you were taught in 20-1 um, when you're expanding two binomials that are conjugates. And the shortcut is you could multiply the first term times the first term. So root x times root x is x. And then you could do the last term times the last term. So negative 2 times positive 2 is minus 4. I'll just quickly show you off to the side why we could um, do the shortcut. So if I was to do the full expansion, root x times root x is x, and then root x times plus two is plus two root x, minus two times root x is minus two root x, negative two times positive two is minus four. And what happens with the conjugate is these middle terms will always cancel. So plus two root x minus two root x will cancel and I'll be left with x minus four. So if you have a conjugate, you could take that shortcut. Some students would say, would you want me to expand this two x inside? And the answer would be no, because right now this is in factored form. So generally we always factor our answers. Um, so I don't need to expand this. Oh, one other thing I want you to see. Another thing students might say is, can these x's cancel? And the answer is no. My numerator, this is a factor, and this is a factor. My denominator, x minus four is a factor. So the only way I could cancel out an x minus four is if I had an x minus four up here. So you cannot cancel that. All right, rationalize the denominator in each of the following expressions and then simplify. I'm going to give you uh, a hint actually um, in a second. So let's actually just set it up by the conjugate. So we wanna rationalize, we look at this, we say it's a binomial, we rationalize by multiplying by the conjugate. Okay, so the conjugate would be x plus two root x 
and x plus 2 root x. I always actually like taking care of um, what I'm rationalizing first because I want to make sure I do truly get rid of that radical. So I'm actually going to, um, you always do want to expand your conjugate. So I'm going to do the shortcut. x times x is x squared. Last term times last term. Negative 2 times positive 2 is minus 4. Root x times root x is x. Okay, so I will have that. And then my numerator, I have 1 times this binomial. So I could just simply write x plus 2 root x. Okay. Um, I could factor out an x in the denominator here if I want to, but it won't cancel. Um, so this is good enough for the answer. All right, let's look at this one. We want to rationalize. We want to get rid of the radicals. So we're going to multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate. The conjugate would be uh, square root of x minus root 5. This is a binomial. Put that in a bracket. And this is the square root of x minus root 5. So multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate. Again, I always like taking care of the conjugate first. So root x times root x is x. And then this would be minus root 5 times root 5 is 5 because it's the square root of 25, which is 5. Now, what the hint that I'm going to give you is um, don't expand unless you must. So I'll show you what I mean. So just write don't expand unless you must. So what we always have to expand is the conjugate, right? I have to expand this because I need to get rid of the radical in the denominator. But I don't want to expand the numerator unless I must. So let's bring down what we have in the numerator. We've got an x minus 5, and we've got root x minus 5. The reason why I don't want to expand is if you look at this, I've got an x minus 5 and an x minus 5. These two factors will cancel. If you expand, you won't see that, and you won't do the canceling. So. Um, this factor will cancel with this factor, and I'm left with an answer. Um, I think I made a mistake here. This should also be. So I'm left with an answer of the square root of x minus the square root of 5. Okay, so we'll see that again in another example. Okay, let's do this. So again, um, okay, so in 20-1, we only ever rationalized the um, denominator. In calculus, we might be asked to rationalize the numerator. So if you look at this question, there is no radical in the denominator. So this says rationalize the numerator in each of the following expressions and then simplify each. Okay, so the radical in this example happens to be in the numerator. So that's what we're going to rationalize. Whatever you're rationalizing, we're going to be taking the conjugate of this numerator this time. So the conjugate would be the square root of 2x minus 5 plus square root of 7. Multiply top and bottom by that conjugate. Okay. So which one must I expand? It's the numerator that I have to expand, right? Because this is the one that I'm trying to rationalize. So um, you always expand whatever, whichever one you're rationalizing. So we have the square root of 2x minus 5 times the square root of 2x minus 5. We're left with just the radicand, which is 2x minus 5. And then last term times last term is going to be minus 7. Now... Um, for the denominator, you're going to take that hint. Don't expand unless you must. So I've got an x minus 6, and then I've got a 2x minus 5 plus 7 there. Okay, now let's uh, do our like terms in my numerator. So in my numerator, um, this will combine to be 2x minus 12. all over, same denominator, x minus 6, and 
then 2x minus 5 plus root 7. And if you look at your numerator, we could factor something from the numerator. The numerator can be factored by a GCF. So you could remove a 2 out of your numerator. If you factor out a 2, you're going to get x minus 6. Hopefully you see where this will go. And then the factors of x minus 6 and x minus 6 will cancel, which leaves me with a 2 in the numerator and a denominator of 2x minus 5 plus root 7. Now, the question was rationalize the numerator, so that means at the end, your final answer cannot have a radical in the numerator, and it doesn't. It's completely rationalized. Okay, but that would be your answer. All right, let's do this guy. So, first of all, some students might say, well, I don't even have a fraction here to rationalize the numerator, so create a fraction. Put this over 1. Now, this is a binomial. Uh, these two terms are separated by a minus. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate of this numerator. So the conjugate of this numerator would be, I'm going to put this guy in a big bracket. So the conjugate would be the square root of x squared plus x minus 11, and then plus 1, right? That would be the conjugate. So remember we multiplied numerator and denominator by the conjugate. So x squared plus x minus 11 plus 1. Now I need to expand my uh, numerator in this example to get to rationalize it. So first term times first term will leave me with x squared plus x minus 11. Last term times last term minus 1 all over the denominator of the square root of x squared plus x minus 11 plus 1. Now this numerator, um, negative 11 minus 1 would give me negative 12. And then I would say, can I factor that? Um, this could be factored by inspections by inspection, to, so two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and sum to 1, what would that be? 4 and 3, so it would be x plus 4 and x minus 3, and your denominator is x squared plus x minus 11, uh, square root of that, and then plus 1. So that is your rationalized answer. There is one last question. And then that will be the lesson. So if I gave you this and I said I want you to rationalize the numerator. So maybe pause the video, see if you get the answer, and then you could unpause it uh, to check. Okay, so the conjugate would be the square root of 2x plus 2h minus 1 plus the square root of 2x minus 1. Numerator and denominator, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. Okay, I need to expand the numerator. I'm not going to expand the denominator. So first term times first term, you're going to be left with the radicand, and the radicand is 2x plus 2h minus 1. Last term time, okay, now we've got to be really careful here. So it's, we know it's going to be a minus, right, because I've got a po negative and a positive. We always have a minus. Now it's going to be subtracting the radicand, which is 2x minus 1, but this is a binomial. So you need to remember, because I'm subtracting this binomial, you need to put in a bracket. My denominator has an h. And then it has 2x plus 2h minus 1 plus 2x minus 1. 
Now let's clean up our numerator and lots of things will cancel if you do this correctly. So I've got 2x plus 2h minus 1. I'm going to distribute this negative 1 inside to give me minus 2x plus 1 all over h and then that conjugate. Okay, what's going to cancel my numerator? 2x minus 2x will cancel. Uh, negative 1 plus 1 will cancel. What you are left with is you are left with 2h in the numerator. The denominator, you have an h, and then you add that conjugate. h over h will also cancel. To give you a final answer of 2 in the numerator, and then we were left with that conjugate in the denominator. But remember, this question was rationalize the numerator. So your final answer can't have a radical in the numerator, and it doesn't. So that uh, concludes lesson two. So lesson two, the homework. So here is the textbook homework. So page four in the textbook would be um, questions one and two, and I just want you to do those these five questions. Remember that the Google Classroom will have the worked solutions. So you want to go into the Google Classroom for the worked solutions. And then to get more conjugate practice, um, this was from the handout that you were given. It's lesson three in the handout. So this was the handout. We already did lesson one. We did lesson two, here's lesson three in the handout. And what you're going to, going to be doing in this lesson are these questions here. And again, the Google Classroom will have the worked solutions um, for all of this for you. When you're done that, you could then watch the video for lesson three.